Howdy everyone, welcome back to Zeman Outdoors. Today is part two of my bow upgrades for 2021. If you haven't already checked out my first video where I put on my new CBE tactic site, go ahead and check that out. It'll be up here in the corner. In this episode, I'm gonna be installing a Hamsky Hybrid Hunter Pro rest. This rest is right-handed, it's micro-tuned, it's a limb-driven rest, which I haven't used before. But I talked with Nate at Average Jack Archery and he said he loves using the limb driven rests. They seem like they're a little bit easier to install. This is actually going to be my first time trying to install a rest so bear with me. I'm going to have to read through some of the instructions and I've watched quite a few videos of people installing these rests and I think I've got a pretty good idea of how to do that. But if y'all think I've done something wrong just leave a comment below and give me some suggestions and tips. I really like the idea of this rest being micro adjust because I currently have a QAD drop away rest on my bow right now and I do like it, but adjusting it is not really the easiest to do. You know, it doesn't have a micro adjust or anything like that. You've got to get your tools out and you have to be careful how much you actually push left or right. And so for that reason, I thought getting upgrading to a micro adjust would actually be nice to have. All right, so all that being said, we're gonna take this out of the box and see what we got. So you've got the rest itself, a bolt, looks like a little pad, another pad, and a little felt. So it comes with a cool Hamsky sticker. And then instructions are actually the pamphlet inside. And it just tells you how to set it up as limb actuated. You could do top limb, bottom limb, how to adjust the launcher angles, kind of just some notes and adjustments on how to set this up. To get this set up, you're probably gonna need a tape measure, some Allen wrenches. I actually have a knife because my current rest is tied to the string itself so I've got to be able to cut that off. We're going to go ahead and set this out of the way and we will take off the existing rest here. So to start I'm going to carefully try and cut this serving off this. So now you can take the serving off. All right. So now that that is all off, make sure you're careful not to cut your strings there. I am getting new strings, so I'm not super worried about it, but you still don't want to cut them and screw them up. These strings aren't really in bad enough shape that I'm not going to keep them. I'm actually probably going to go ahead and hold on to them when I replace them. Just in case something happens to my new strings, I have these as a backup. If you really like your rest position and where it's at, you can go ahead and take a measurement from the back of your riser to the rest where your arrow would sit. And that'll give you a good idea of where you want to line up your center shot for your new rest. If you're kind of starting from scratch here and you don't really know, you can consult your manufacturer booklet. For my diamond bow, they really just said measure the front and the back and call it good. Um, I did some research online and people are saying about three quarter inch. And I think a lot of the Matthews and Hoyt bows are 13 sixteenths of an inch from the back of your riser. So it'll just depend on which bow you use. I'm not super worried about it because that'll get figured out in the tuning stage. And I am bringing my bow in to get new strings on it. And so when they do that, I'm gonna have them double check the center shot for me as well. We'll go ahead and take the bolt off my existing rest.
and set that aside. Go ahead and take our new rest and our bolt and we're going to screw that in. You wanna get that kind of hand tight so it's not really moving around too much. And again, I don't have a bow press. I don't have anything to hold my bow for me. So I'm just gonna to have to eye it up and see how straight it is. That's really all I can do personally. Um, but again, I'm bringing it to the bow shop to get new strings on and they'll check it out and make sure it's good. You can see there's a hole here and I can just make sure that it's running parallel with that. And I think that'll give me my best bet at getting this lined up perfectly. So you're also gonna to need to set this set screw here. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and tighten that down and get it set first where I want it. And then I'm gonna come back and now I will tighten the bolt back down. And that way it won't move on you when you're tightening it. That's why I do the set screw first and then I come back and do the bigger bolt. So it looks like I should be pretty straight there. Looks pretty good. The next thing you wanna do is go ahead and place your limb pad, which will go right here on your bow. They recommend two and a half to four inches from the end of your limb. Now, one thing I read is the closer you get to your limb, the faster it's gonna pick up and the later it's gonna drop off. And so you may have to mess with it as far as your timing goes a little bit to figure out where exactly you want it. So for now, I'm just gonna measure about three inches and we'll start with that. My limb is pretty thin, so I'm actually gonna cut this pad almost in half so that it fits well on my limb here. So we'll... Put it there. It's got a little sticky on it. And I'm gonna place it right about here. And again, I'm right around three, three and a half inches there. So we'll see how that does. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen this tension adjuster here up a tad and see if we can get this to come off. Okay. So I took my string completely off. I'm gonna go ahead and tie a loop at the end here. So I've got a little loop here at the end. I'm gonna leave the excess for now. But what we'll go ahead and do is wrap this string through the loop and you're going to want to put it right in the middle of your pad you got and so that should not come undone there you will feed your string back through. You want to feed your string back through your tension adjuster here and tighten it just enough so that it's snug, but you can still move it and tighten it up. One thing that I like to check before I tighten up your tension on it is I just like to look at where your arrow is sitting. At this point I have no tension on it and you can start kind of measuring your center shot and make sure your rest is where you really want it. Like I said, mine was sitting at close to 7 eighths and where it's at now is 5 eighths. So I think my rest needs to come towards me a little bit. To adjust your left and right, there's a Allen wrench here on the top. 
and I'm just gonna unscrew it a tad. And then there's a blue knob on the right of it and you can turn it towards you, moves your rest to the left, turning it away from you or to the right, moves your rest to the right. So what I'm gonna do here is measure my center shot to be three quarters of an inch. And you'll just tighten that screw back down. Another test, go ahead and put your arrow in and you'll measure in the front. It looks like three quarters of an inch. Then measure it on the other side. And it's pretty close to three quarters of an inch. I'll say that's good for now. We'll let the boat technician, you know, perfect it and one thing too is, you know, when you start getting into the tuning process and doing walk back tuning and things like that, you're going to iron out these issues because most likely you're going to tune it into a center shot. As far as my up and down or my vertical plane, it looks like it may be a little high. You really kind of want your arrow going through that burger button there. So what I'm going to do for that one As you can see, there's a, another Allen wrench screw here that if you just loosen a little bit, and then you have a, another blue knob on the top. And you can screw that up and down, and that'll help you get your center shot. Like I said, you want typically you want your center shot right at this burger button, which is the hole where you mounted your rest. So you want it to line up perfectly right there with that burger button. So I'm gonna take a look and it looks like it needs to go a tad bit lower. I think that's good right there. And then you'll take your Allen wrench and again, just tighten that guy back up. And that's really all you do for the, your adjustments as far as your center shot. They say to do in the instructions is you want to tighten this until your spring is at about an eighth an inch. But you're really trying to tighten this up enough so that your whale tail is completely flat. So I I'll kind of show you that here. I'm not sure how well you can see it. But as I pull it, it pulls the whale tail down and you want it to be just tight enough so it's seated all the way down like that. I'm gonna go ahead and get that tightened up. The other thing that affects the timing of your rest is this spring tension. So you gotta make sure it's tightened just enough to seat it all the way down. So then you'll take your Allen wrench and you'll tighten that where you want it. What I would do also before you cut your string is, this is like any other string. If you start shooting it 40, 50 times, it may start to stretch a little bit. And again, that can affect your timing of your whale tail there on when it you know flips up and, and flips back down as you shoot. So I'd make sure you take a look at that. Another good way to check timing is you can take some chalk or some lipstick and get it on the edge of your fletchings and you want to make sure when your arrow goes through that you're dropping your whale tail quick enough that it's not contacting anything. So if you put your lipstick or you put some chalk dust on the fletchings and you take some shots through and you start to see dust on your whale tail there or along your rest or anything you know you're getting some fletching contact and you'll have to adjust either the tension in your spring or the location on your limb of where you have your string tied in so that you can make sure your rest is dropping quick enough to get out of the way. I'm going to go out and shoot it a few times and test it out 
And then in the next video, I'll show me getting some new strings. We'll have the technician check and see how good of a job I end up doing on this. And at that point, my bow is pretty much ready for 2021. And once we get to that point, I can start testing my arrows. And I'm going to go through the Ranch Ferry process again because with all the new things I'm adding to my bow, it's surely going to adjust some things. And I just want to make sure that I have the best arrow for my bow. So go ahead and subscribe, hit that bell notification, and stay tuned for future videos. Thanks for watching, guys.